Hello friends, welcome back to this week's video. I hope you were having a wonderful week and are ready for the weekend. It's finally stopped raining here a little bit and the sun's actually coming out, so that's nice. I have been busy doing other stuff <laughs> this week. I, behind the scenes, am working on trying to figure out the ins and outs of running a business and it's hard on this old body's brain there's a lot of things that are new to me there's a lot of things that I need to try out before I can jump in and so I didn't really have time to paint anything but luckily I always have some backgrounds somewhere available for some doodling and this one wasn't too far gone in a sense that I still had the footage of how I created the background as it was one of those uh, backgrounds that I did a couple weeks ago I made a video of it and I dubbed it the cotton candy background or something to that effect. So that's what I used. In fact, this background I think was the first one that I did of the three that I did. And if you have watched my last video where I was doing a recap of 2023 and all the art that I did, you would know that I tend to make a few more backgrounds of the same style or the same type sometimes and uh, this one was one of them. So the reason why I did not choose this background because I just couldn't figure out what to put on. It had a lot going on in terms of areas that were interesting to doodle on um, but it was also a kind of an odd shape and so I had decided not to use that one for a video just yet because I was still percolating on it a little bit and trying to figure out what to do. To be honest, I'm still not 100% happy with how this one turned out. I was trying something new this time around. I guess my headspace was filled with other things this week and so it was a little bit harder for me to concentrate on doodling. But, you know, in the end, it's a video, it's fun to watch, it is different, and it is uh, therefore worthy of me showing it to you all. I ended up with so much footage for this video and if you've seen my community post um, at the point where I was posting that message I still had over an hour of footage that needed to be compressed, condensed, cut, you know, taken out, what have you. So uh, it always happens when I add more elements to it and that's partially why I'm shying away from um, doing multi not multimedia but well, maybe you can say multimedia like um, different elements to my paintings because I end, I end up with so much footage that I have to then process <laughs> so so that's one of the reasons maybe why I am not showing more of other things that I do because there's just a lot of footage always and it's a hassle to go through it all and decide what you want to keep and what you want to cut out and what you want to speed up and so forth so I managed and it is now a uh, delightful 22 minutes long so hopefully you will still get most of what I'm trying to convey to you this way and you usually do that's not 
usually a, an issue but sometimes I would love to just show you my footage in real time real speed without having to speed it up but it's it, it would be very very boring and there's a lot of thinking and a lot of pen twirling and so forth so I, it, it's it would not be much fun so back to this background it shaped up to be uh, very interesting and I was trying really hard to keep those edges soft and flowy uh, and I was too focused I guess on what was going on on the on in the middle part that I ended up with quite harsh edges which I ended up not hating um, I did try and lean into that a little bit more as you can see and I was also trying retrospectively to loosen up those um, some of those edges a little bit more but I was unsuccessful and so this part that I am outlining starting to doodle on here um, it didn't dry as nicely as I would have hoped and that kind of then dictated how I was going to proceed with this whole doodle process and um, the feel of this painting. So this is me trying to cover up the part that I did not like so much. Because it was a fairly large area, it, the doodle had to be kind of big. And luckily for me, the other side of that corner, the opposite end, also kind of didn't dry the way I would have liked. So I was able to um, do something similar in that corner as well. And from then on, I then, I could have put lines in and I briefly thought about it, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to put neural lines in. I didn't want to put just regular lines in. And I also had these two blank spots that I was kind of hoping to do something fun with. But like I said, that those two corner pieces kind of dictated how it, I was going to proceed, um, at least in my mind. And so I just outlined them roughly and decided to kind of go with the amoeba type feel um, for this whole piece. So um, that was what I ended up doing. So it's very clunky very chunky looking which is not usually what I go for but in the end I didn't hate it hate it I it just it, it just feels very off to me which is not a bad thing altogether I mean I, I do these doodles that I can practice that I can get comfortable with new styles I I do try to incorporate things that I don't normally do like I want to grow as a as an budding artist and so this is one way for me to practice new doodle styles so right now I'm not a hundred percent in love with it I love the shading that I did I loved the colors but the doodles themselves well, you know, sometimes you love some things and you don't love other things as much and that is okay. Per usual, it turned out completely different than I thought it would and Sometimes part of me wishes I 
could practice on it first and then go in and doodle and maybe come up with a couple of different ideas. So I could potentially, you know, make a copy of it and doodle over that beforehand. But then where is the fun in that? It would, to me, that would not be as spontaneous as if I just stare at it and then come up with something that, you know, sparks my imagination. So this is the Arches watercolor paper, the fine grain, not the, the rough one that I do not like at all. Um, and it, oh, it's just, even this one, the fine grain is just so hard on my pens. Um, especially the super fine ones. I have a 003 and a 005. The 005 I have uh, two different brands and one is a lot finer than the other. Um, but yeah, it was that those watercolor papers just chew up my my tips so much and I really should get different pens um, for the rougher paper uh, but I either forget or I just have not found the right ones yet and also I have a lot of pens and I really want to just use up what I have so um, but if you are doodling on arches watercolor paper just be aware that they are not kind to your pens or even the colored pencils too. I guess one payoff is that I get these really beautiful edges and in real life they are really really pretty and that's the difference when you work with 100% cotton watercolor paper versus the cheaper kind such as the Canson the the way the color grabs a hold of that paper and settles into those nooks and crannies is really really pretty so I guess I can't have it all or maybe I can and I just need to research a little bit more that's always an option too but you know it is what it is I try to be as careful as possible because I know that it does a number on my pens so even though I use the the finer ones to kind of sketch or outline where I want things to go I I also try to use more of the thicker pens later on just to give my fine liners a break. One thing I like about these shapes, especially when you do a couple of outlines and if you have a center, they, they do lend for a very nice like doodle space. So I do enjoy that and it was nice to work on a little bit bigger scale this time around so then I had outlined those two blank spaces in the middle of the page and then I just needed something to fill out the page a little bit more and again I was thinking should I use lines or should I just continue with the chunky feel and that's what I went for in the end so I just added a couple more of those blobs amoebas whatever you want to call them and because I didn't have a blank space I kind of created a space in the middle for to make it a little bit more cohesive, I guess. So that's what I went with. I kind of wanted to connect them together a little bit. And that's why I drew those lines and then these kind of cobblestones for the first three or four. I have to say that working on a bigger scale like this does fill up the page a lot faster so I was 
thankful for that especially since I wasn't really feeling the doodling this week as much as other weeks I liked the intensity of the colors once they had dried but I wanted to bring in a little bit more colors and so I decided to use my colored pencils and add some colors instead of maybe using gold or filling them in with black or just leaving them the way they were and then I also wanted to shade the inside of those shapes a little bit more so um, having such a pretty background and then being able to intensify it and make it stand out even more just really uh, made this piece pop a little even more so even though this is considered fine grained watercolor paper there's still quite a bit of tooth to it and i felt like the colored pencils didn't blend as much as i would have liked in the end it kind of gives it a nice texture and you can only really see it when you look up close i was trying to use my finger to smooth it out a little bit especially the outline that i did with the black but i was not very successful i also toned it down just a little bit more at the end uh, by using an eraser especially those little cobblestone areas they were just a little bit too bright for me so I used an eraser and just took off um, the top layer I do like the the shading part on the inside of those areas so I enjoyed that I think I was trying to offset the chunkiness of this painting a little bit by bringing in some more dainty doodles and I also needed something a little bit finer around the opposite corners of the piece. And so I used my very fine liner pen, even though I was cringing all the way through, to draw these super fine lines, which you can't really tell that they're there, but it gives it a shading of a different level. and. I was really really pleased with how they turned out and um, yeah that kind of brought it all together in my eyes and all that was left to do was to um, bring in my dots these little dots just bring the whole piece together I think and it also adds for a little bit more interest because some of these you almost don't see when you glance at it but then when you look a little bit closer you can tell that something's there and that makes you look maybe some of the lines I draw with the purpose of them getting those dots in the end like this one here other times I decide on a whim where to place them I wasn't going to put gold dots around the edge of the painting where I get these nice jaggedy lines but I placed them there anyway and I'm glad I did it just gives it a little bit more detail a little bit more extraness to it and if you are new here or if you have missed the videos where I mention what I use for the dots I just use regular acrylic paint it's I use the golden brand because that's what I have on hand but you can use whatever and I have these dotting tools that I have in they, they come in different sizes and so depending on the space that I have available or the, the doodle that I want to finish off with the dots I choose the size of dotting end and then I just dip it in I don't do anything to the acrylic paint I just take it straight from the bottle and usually whatever is in the cap as you saw before is plenty I don't pour it out onto anything 
Also, for those of you who don't know, I usually try to list everything that I have used in the description box below the video. And it's not always super apparent where that's located. Uh, you sometimes have to look for it a little bit. And if you are watching this on the TV, I'm sorry, I don't even know where to help you find it but if you're on a desktop if you are on the phone uh, below the video um, where the title usually is there is a more button and then there is a little arrow and if you click on that it will um, expand and then everything should be right there and I have links that you can click to I don't always mention this, but I have everything listed in the description box below the video. There's links that will take you to Amazon where you can look at the things that I've used. And if you decide to make a purchase through that link, I will get a very small percentage from your purchase at no extra cost to you. It just helps me that money usually goes straight back into me purchasing new materials. So thank you so much for those of you who have made purchases through those links. I appreciate it very much. So this is the end of the video. Here is a close up to all the little details. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope this made you decide to subscribe to my channel and if you do, I am so happy to have you in my little art corner here and I look forward to a new video with you all next week.